you have um, a whole bunch of blocks, but in order for me to illustrate what's going on and for it to be sort of a scale that's reasonable, uh, I went down to the wood workshop so that I could get something a little larger. Okay, something I can move around a little more easily. So what I have done on the board is similar to what you have done uh, with the blocks and in your books and on your laptops, okay? So I have a couple of isosceles triangles here, or I almost do. I need to construct from these equal sides, I need to construct that third side, don't I, okay? So let's just do it for this one. Here's an example. Okay, so I have my triangle now. Right? Now hopefully, as you went through it, as you measured, okay, you would have had some lengths up here. You know, I think I had something like this, five, five, and then this would have been three. Okay? And then you went and you did some angles. Okay? So here's what I measured um, while you were all working. I measured the one that I had um, on the ground, uh, on the table. And this is what I got. Um, I have my 71 degrees, 35 degrees, and 71. That's what I measured. Now before we make any conclusions through this, let's just look at it and notice a few things, okay? Number one, if you add up these angles, if you add up these angles, look at them with me now. What do you get? What do you get? Yeah, Brandon. Okay, now you're expecting to get 180, aren't you? We have learnt that the angle sum of a triangle is 180 degrees. But, <laughs> if you have a look at my numbers, let's just do one at a time, 71 plus 35, is a hundred and a hundred and six because there's one there. A hundred and six plus seventy one is a hundred and seventy seven. We're three degrees off. Question mark. Okay, now legit question. This is not the main point I'm making, but I hope you arrived at something similar. Yeah. You add it up and you're like, huh? 56, 56. I don't have I don't have one eighty. Okay, now question, and I can think of at least two answers to this. Anyone want to raise their hand and suggest, why don't I have 180 degrees? Okay, first attempt, yeah. Uh, okay, excellent. So I'm going to pitch one of these. Right. So, put your hand out for a second, I'll come back to you in a second. You've got this instrument here, right? And, well, it's not perfect. And you can only measure so well, like my, my eyesight is terrible. So, you know, between one degree, I'm not sure if it's 35.1 or 35.2, can't tell. So I'm only so accurate. We have what we call here limits of accuracy. Okay. There's the first suggestion. Someone want to give me another one? Anything you had? Yeah. Um, is it because you're using like the squares and like yep. because they're all like you can't get it really perfect. Like, as you can see on yep. that one now, there's a gap. Perfect. And, like, yeah, yeah absolutely. And it's hard to keep it still. Exactly right. So number one, the instrument I'm using has a limit. But number two, like we've constructed something and it's not perfect. Do you remember we were talking about um, Euclid a few lessons ago, right? And his introduction to geometry. He knew that this wasn't perfect, but he imagined a world where it was. And in that world, every triangle adds up to exactly 180 degrees. You can measure everything perfectly. It's not the world we live in. That doesn't mean it's not real. Okay. All right. Now. Let's move on. Here's what I'm interested in looking at. Okay, yeah. There is also another one that we found that um, when you're trying to measure them, they move around. Yes, yeah, of course. Said. Yep, yep, so good, good. Again, again, I put that under limits of accuracy, I think, because we're just human beings. Yeah. You know? Okay. So now here's the thing that's interesting, okay? Have a look at your angles. What do you notice about them? What do you notice about them? We started with two equal sides, mm -hmm. right? That was how we constructed this shape. What did we end up with? Yes. Uh, we always ended up with like what a triangle that kept getting larger and larger, like weird. Okay, all right. So you might have been changing up like this, and I'm going to change this in a second. What I can see, in addition to that, is that these angles here in these corners, right? They're always equal, right? We started with equal sides, and what you end up with without a choice is you end up with equal angles. If they're not equal, that's down to just limits of accuracy and when you're measuring, right? Um, not only are they equal, but can you see they're always down here. It's never this one up here except by coincidence. If you, uh, you know, by coincidence make an equilateral triangle because then they're all equal. It's always these guys. It's always the angles. Mark this. This is really, really important. It's always the angles that are opposite the equal sides. That's so important. I want to say it again. And in fact, I'm going to ask you to write it down. Okay. Every time you have a triangle with equal sides in it, you 
Get equal angles, and the equal angles are opposite equal sides. I'll write that down as well, and so should you. Yes? How do you know that they're opposite? Oh, because it's... Okay, so I'm looking at their position, okay? So let me write that down. Equal angles... Equal angles are opposite... Equal sides, and you have to be, right? Let's have a look at this... Um, this triangle over here, okay, um, it's a bit smaller, but I could do the same thing, right? When I put this up, over here, okay, and um, I mark out my third side, the one that's not equal to the other two, right? Even without measuring, you can see there's a smaller angle over here, right? And then there's these two guys who clearly are the same size, and measurement will confirm that, okay? It's not only when there's one small one and two bigger ones, right? Uh, let's, let's just, I'll complete this triangle, put it over there. If I now take the same sides, right? And I make the angle between them really, really large. So think of angles now. What kind of triangle is this with regard to angles? It's a obtuse triangle, very good, because that's that angle's huge, right? Now when I make this third side, there we go. That angle up there is obtuse, like you said, it's huge, right? You have these two smaller angles, but again, you can go ahead and measure, and you actually did, you will find that they are equal to each other, okay? Equal angles are opposite equal sides. You will see this written another way as well. Um, so you can put this underneath this, right? We've been making isosceles triangles, right? So sometimes this gets called, the reason is that base angles in isosceles triangles, because that's that's what we're working with. Right? Base angles in isosceles triangles are equal. It's the same idea. I prefer the first way um, of saying it because it's a bit faster. And also, here's the word base, right? If I say, oh, where's the base of a pyramid? You would say it's at the it's at the bottom, right? Even you know, like to say something is basic is you know low level, okay? And sure enough. Sometimes these equal angles are at the bottom, right? They're at the bottom, they're at the bottom, but they don't have to be at the bottom. They could be over here on the side. Or if you want, you could draw, you could draw the triangle upside down, like this, and then your base angles are at the top of the triangle. I think that's a bit funny, okay? So it's fine, you'll sometimes see it written that way and it's totally correct. I like this one though, it's a bit quicker and I think it's more helpful, okay?